All right, so here's the scenario. You just received an email from the shipper. It's exactly what you've been waiting on. The shipper has sent you an opportunity to go ahead and bid on some freight for them. Now, what you wanna do now is take a look at the lane that they've sent you and go back and give them a competitive rate. So you would think that now is the time that you are just excited, you're ready to go ahead and execute to give that shipper a, a, a bid so you can get an opportunity to move the freight. But for some reason, you're not very excited now. It's almost like you got a hole in the bottom of your stomach because you're very nervous. And the reason that you are nervous is because you really don't know what to do. You don't know where to start at when it comes to giving that shipper a competitive rate. Now, why is it that you don't know what to do? Why don't you know how to go out and get a rate? Well, the rate game is a mystery when it really boils down to it. There's not a defined formula that says, hey, if you go in and you do these three things, you can get a rate that the shipper is going to accept. That's not how it works. You gotta go in and figure out what is gonna work for the shipper, what is gonna work for you as a brokerage, and what is gonna work for the carrier. And that's gonna take you some time. That's gonna go in, you're gonna need to do some things in order to get the result that you're looking for. So what I wanna do today is I wanna talk to you about three things that's causing you some serious problems when it comes down to being able to go out and get that rate so that it gives you an opportunity to make some money. Problem number one that you're facing is you don't have a defined process in place. You don't know how to get a rate. There's not something that you go in and do every single time to get a certain outcome. So we're gonna talk about helping you to define that. Number two, your second problem that you're having is you don't know what moves rates up and down. You know, in, in the rate world, rates can be $2,400 in the summertime for a specific lane, and for that lane, same lane, it can be $3,300 in the wintertime based on weather events. So we're gonna talk about some of that and how late rates are moved up and down based on the weather and different things like that. And then number three, the third problem that you're having is you don't have a tool. You don't have a resource that you can go and tap into to help you form your rate. So, so we're gonna talk about that today, what tools we use and how we get this whole rate game started so that it'll give you somewhere to start when it comes down to forming your rate. So now let's get into the business. Okay, so before we go any further, let's talk about how we get rates. Who determines what the rate is gonna be? When we're talking about a rate, we're talking about a price to move a lane from point A to point B. So who determines that? Now, oftentimes people think that the freight broker ultimately determines what the price is gonna be in a lane. And that's really not true. When we really start to look at that and understand how the process works, we realize that the broker is just a person, an entity that is you know, going to a carrier, going to a shipper and offering a price. And it has to be a negotiation that happens to determine what is a fair price. So the marketplace, the service providers, the brokers, the shippers, and the carriers all determine what the price will ultimately be. I don't think one person holds any you know, stronger position or um, a greater power than another. It just depends on what the dynamics are in that lane. Now, if I go into a lane and there's a whole lot of trucks out there and <laughs> you don't have a whole lot of demand for those trucks, then yes, the broker is gonna have the negotiation, negotiation power, excuse me, because there's not a whole lot of demand. And we know supply and demand controls price. But if we look on the other side of that and we say, hey, there's a whole lot of loads out there and there's not a lot of trucks, then of course, trucks are gonna have more of the negotiation power. So the prices can go up based off of that. So when we're talking about who determines rates, that is going to be a party of three, not a party of one. That's gonna be the marketplace and all that are involved in the marketplace being the shipper, the broker, and of course the carrier because the carrier has the asset. All right, so to this point we've talked about what a freight rate is and that's simply the cost to move a load from point A to point B. And then we talked about who sets freight rates and what we've determined there is the marketplace set the rate, the marketplace being freight brokers, shippers, and carriers. And now what we're getting ready to discuss is the three common issues that freight brokers typically encounter when they start going out and sourcing the market to find out what rates are 
to take those rates back to the shipper. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm gonna cover the topics that we just mentioned, but I'm not gonna go too in depth into those topics right now. I'm gonna give you some context on each point, but we're gonna go further in detail on those topics and on rates on our Super Tuesday business meeting. We're gonna have this meeting on March the 9th. I'll be sending out the invite on the 9th, the morning of the 9th, between 03 and 0600 a.m. Central Standard Time, you'll receive the invite. So make sure that you're there and there on time. We're gonna start Super Tuesday business meeting, March 9th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, so problem number one is you get overwhelmed because you don't have defined processes and procedures in place as to how you get a rate every single time. And when you don't have that in place, you get overwhelmed. You get all of this different information that you're trying to evaluate and it just becomes too much till you shut down. You actually say, okay, you know what? I'm just not gonna even give a rate back because there's just too many things to consider. And the things that I'm talking about here are the variables in the different lane. And instead of looking at the key variables, you start to looking at all of the variables and trying to consider all of them. And it just doesn't work that way. You just get overwhelmed. So it's better to look at some key variables. What I look at when it comes down to price in the lane, the most is truck capacity. You know, there's, there are some different things to look at, but truck capacity is a very, very key element of what affects pricing in a lane. So I always want to know what truck capacity is in a lane before providing a price. Some people go in and they look at what the paid shipper rates are. And then after looking at the paid shipper rates, they'll go back and say, okay, well, this is the amount that it's going to cost to move the lane without ever going to the load board and verifying that you can actually get it moved at that cost with carriers. Because what you always have to remember is that that, that cost, when you see that paid shipper rate, that's just an average cost. So there are some that are gonna be higher than that, some that are gonna be lower than that. So it's important to define your process, define your procedures, how you go about getting a rate, what are the variables you're considering. Are you considering the weight? Of course, that'll be a good one to start out with. How much is the weight of the shipment? What is the commodity? What is it that you're actually shipping? When you get the commodity and you got the weight, the next thing that you wanna know is how many miles is it from the point of pickup to the point of delivery? Exactly what, how, much, how much time is it gonna take? Because when we're talking about miles, we know, hey, if it's over 500 miles, that's gonna be at least a day. You know, it's gonna give you a day's time. So when you're considering rates, you wanna look at how much time the carrier is going to be with that load, because of course that's gonna affect pricing. Sometimes people look at fuel cost. You know, how much is it gonna cost for that carrier to move the load from point A to point B so that you can figure that into your rate. There are some different variables. You have to take a look at what's important to you to determine your rate. The important thing is, is to get a rate back to your shipper. It doesn't have to be exact. You know, you can be wrong or you can be, and when I say wrong, people look at it this way. They think that because you go back and you give a rate to the shipper, it's something wrong with that rate. No, it just means that it didn't work for that particular lane. That shipper said, hey, I have a, another um, carrier or I have a broker that's giving me a better price. That happens, there's nothing wrong with that. That gives you a starting place. That's about building rapport with the shipper, figuring out what works and what does not work. But at the same time, you have a responsibility to yourself to get a lane that's going to be profitable for you and profitable for the carrier and the shipper can be satisfied with the price. Because it's just not about satisfying the shipper, we also have to satisfy the, the carrier. The carrier has to get paid and has to get paid a good price so that he can stay in business as well. And then you have to make a profit. So it's about pricing the lane correctly, not just for the shipper. Okay, another problem that we have is learning how different things affect the rates, what makes rates go up, what makes rate go down. Now, if you remember not long ago, back in February, the latter part of February 2020, and on into March, we had this real big surge where people were going out and they were buying a lot of everything. They were thinking that, you know, maybe they weren't gonna be able to get certain things, so they were buying things in bulk. And when that happened, stores start to run out of things. So, of course, rates start to go up and it costs more to get a lane from point A to point B than it did before uh, COVID-19 had taken place. Well, that was about March time frame. as March continued toward the latter part of March, then rates started to go down 
Now, because that surge is wearing off now, people weren't buying as frequently, as in bigger bulk as they were when it was at the height, when everything was just starting, people were trying to get a whole lot of extra things. So those rates went up, but when that stopped, they leveled out and then the rates plunged. And of course, freight brokers got the blame because those rates plunged, but it was actually COVID-19, what was going on with that, with the surge. Anytime you have that kind of stuff that happens within the economy, rates will be affected. Another thing that's gonna affect rates is weather. I was in a lane a thousand miles from North Carolina to Wisconsin. If you were doing that lane in the summertime, we were doing it at about $2,300 to $2,400. Then suddenly, in the wintertime, as it got closer to the winter and the weather got bad, this was our first time working that lane. We didn't know that it was gonna change so drastically, but we ended up working that lane at about $3,300 to $3,600 as compared to the $23 to $24 in the summertime. So why would it go to that much? Why would it go from 24 to 3,300, 3,600? Well, of course, because of truck capacity. Truck capacity, again, affects, you know, how much it's gonna cost to move a lane from point A to point B. When you don't have a whole lot of ice on the road, you have more trucks in the Wisconsin area. But when you get a whole lot of ice and snow, then trucks don't really wanna go into those areas. So you're gonna have a challenge to move loads, which, of course, that supply and demand thing again, prices will increase. So we have to be aware of when these things take place, you know, of course it's gonna affect rates. Then we have to go and explain that so that we can possibly, you know, maybe have to get a, a rate increase if you're already in a lane and you're moving a lane. Just say you were doing it at a contract rate or you just had a consistent lane you were moving and now some dynamics have changed. You gotta go explain that so you can get rate increases in those lanes. All right, so now last I wanna talk about is a rate sourcing tool. Now, if you've already been in the business for quite some time, you may not need a whole lot of tools to form rates because you have a lot of history. You know what lanes are, you know how much they're going for, but when you're new, you're definitely gonna need some assistance when it comes to getting a good rate. And I like to start off with something called Rate Mate through truck stop. I think that's a really good rate sourcing tool. What it does is it allows for you to put in a pickup point and a delivery point, and then it's gonna go back and give you the history, the lane history, the price history, what it costs to move that load from point A to point B from the last seven days all the way out to the last 12 months, I believe. But it's a great tool. I think it's a must have when you first start your business because it gives you a starting place to get your rate started. Now again, we don't depend solely on just a rate sourcing tool because we know that it's just gonna give us the average rate in the lane. But getting an average rate, having a place to start with with your rate is such a great uh, resource to you because you're not just starting off at zero. You know, some people just go in and they look at the national rate, but the national rate doesn't have much at all to do with a lane that you're working, a specific lane that you're working in. Let's say you're working in a lane from Atlanta, uh, Georgia to Charlotte, North Carolina. You wanna go within that particular lane and see what the cost is to move a load in that lane. You're not concerned about what the national rate is. You just wanna know what that lane is gonna cost you to get moved. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. I wanted to point out these three issues in hopes that it could help you start to get over some of those struggles that you're having in your own business, especially when it comes down to giving rates back to your shipper. The most important thing we said earlier is starting to get some rates back. Don't worry about you know trying to make sure that you know the rate is at a certain number, get the rate at the number that you can move the load at because that's most important. Once you know what the number is you can move it, then give that rate to your shipper. And then from that point, you can start to figure out where you need to be as far as, as the rate is concerned. That's gonna be a fair price to the shipper that's gonna allow for you to make profit, that's gonna allow for you to carry to make profit. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. I certainly hope this information has been helpful. If you're interested in learning more about rates, I'm gonna leave a free video around here about how to calculate rates. But we're also going to have another rates live class on March the 9th. We're gonna have our Super Tuesday business meeting on March the 9th, and we're gonna be talking about rates. We're gonna show you exactly how we get a rate in a lane 
Uh, we're going to go through an actual example that we have and show you how late, how, how we arrive <laughs> at a rate. So I wish you the very best in your life and business. Until the next time, see you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.